So, you find yourself on a weekend. Everybody's anticipating this all week. TGI Friday, get wasted, hang with your boys, hang with your girls. Maybe you can find yourself some funny parties, some clubs, some sexual experiences maybe. Hey, live it up, let's go. How many times have you seen somebody do this for weekends on end, months, years, even decades on it, and still wake up the next morning feeling empty, unaccomplished, and hungover? Well, if you haven't, you will soon. What I'm describing to you is what experience in my entire 20s that I had to take my entire 30s to recover from. So if you're watching this Ecclesiastes Wealth and Wisdom Breakdown of Episode 2, Chapter two, we've been breaking this down. Episode one was last week, chapter one last week, and we also broken down Proverbs one through 31, so you can check out the series right here to get you caught up. But here in episode two, chapter two of Ecclesiastes, which is a book completely, in my opinion, much different in contrast from Proverbs. A lot of awesome wealth and wisdom and prosperity secrets, how to be happy, how to create better decisions, all that stuff was inside Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, much different king. And some of the lessons I learned here, number one, meaning and purpose is not found in pleasure. As I read chapter two, I find again, King Solomon expressing a lot of emptiness. You feel his emptiness. Let's read from Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse three reads like this. I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly, my mind still guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was good for people to do under the heavens during the few days of their lives. So here he is at the end of his life. So you know what? I spent a lot of my life being disciplined. Now I want to experience what they've been experiencing without so being wise and disciplined and so focused on honoring God. And next thing you know, these next few days, whether it turned into weeks or months or years, he's starting to experience a decline in his blessing and favor from God. With that being said, King Solomon thought he was doing right. He spent money on centers. He spent his money on parks, theme parks that he would say of their day. He spent a lot of money on people. He spent a lot of money to improve the lives of others that he thought was through the will of God to honor God and to serve other people according to God's will. In addition to that, he was a very good steward. He kept bringing money in. His territories continued to expand. They continued to pay him tribute. He stacked cash. He acquired folks that worked for him. He called them slaves in the Bible, male and female. He stacked horses and chariots. His farms started growing. So his wealth, which is exponentially count pounding. But in all this, he still felt meaningless. So I often say that this is the place where a lot of Christians say, well, why am I going to save my money anyway? Why am I have to go and achieve a business and, and, and get it started and, and be financially free and financially independent and go for all this stuff. And even God says here in King Solomon's Ecclesiastes, it's all for nothing. It's meaningless. That's an excuse because either way, you're going to have a hard life without money, or a hard life, honoring God and being good stewardship, which you'll then get a lot of money if you follow the right laws. Now, if you're gonna choose a life, do you want it hard without money? Or do you want it hard blessing God's people, financially free and financially independent, and creating some generational wealth for you to transfer to the next generation? Which of these two options do you prefer? Which leads me to my second point. Wisdom will stick with you through the good and bad times. It's written here in Ecclesiastes 2, verse nine, it reads like this. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse three. Last week's episode, it reads like this. I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing folly. My mind still guiding me with wisdom. So here's the thing too. Wisdom will let you know what to do. Hey, here's the right decision to make based on time, experiences, the talent that you have, but still up to you to make up that choice. That being said, even in his 20s, when he first asked God for wisdom, when he took the reign of Israel at 20 years old, he accomplished a lot. He put Israel into a golden age where everybody was just happy, everybody felt safe, everybody was protected, everybody was rich, everybody was blessing other people, everybody was blessing God. King Solomon even built a massive tabernacle to honor God. But through all that, what stayed with him and with others is wisdom. So if there's something you're going to give your children, it's not why you leave to them, but so you can leave in them. So yes, you can leave them a trust fund. Yeah, you can leave them an IRA. Yeah, you can leave them some real estate. But the most important thing that you can leave your children is wisdom. And I hope you write those things down. That's why I write a book. That's why I create YouTube content, because I know one day 
This is a library of content for my descendants to one day look over. You know, Patrick has often told me that in the Jewish faith, there's three things they ask you to do. Number one is to write a book. Number two, have a son. And number three, plant a tree. All of these three things have to do with something for the future. So if you're going to go through all the madness that you go through, however you handle life, good, bad, ugly, and everything in between, one of the things that will stick with you through this generation and through the next is wisdom. So I pray and hope that you jot down your wisdom for your family because it only takes one person in a family's bloodline to change your last name forever. Will it be you? That's the question. Let's read what he says here in Ecclesiastes 2, verse 10 through 11. It reads like this. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all of my labor, and this was a reward for all my toil. Yet, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had told to achieve, everything was meaningless and chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. So here's the bottom line. My lesson for this is anything that you want in life, well, guess what? You have the opportunity to accomplish it. The simple fact is, God, if you're displaying the right attitudes and behaviors and you're in alignment with him and you decide, you know, with your assignment that he's uh, called and purpose in your life, he can't refuse to bless your life in between. God, I ain't expecting you to be perfect. Oftentimes, oh, I gotta be perfect, I gotta be perfect. I'm gonna be myself in God's favor and God's blessing. Yes, but operate with wisdom. We're all humans. We all fail. We all fall short of the glory of God. The question for you is, when you do fall short and when you do fail, who do you look to? Do you look to parties? Do you look to food? Do you look to your money? Do you look to your business? Do you look to your wife, your kids, your own image, your social media profiles, likes, comments, and whatever the case may be? Is that your God or is God your God? Wisdom will tell you what decision you need to make at that time and what you're going to leave to the next generation as well. Which leads me to my last point. Use what God gives you and live your best life now. Now, King Solomon, here towards the end of this chapter, in chapter two, he felt more and more frustrated because he realized who the wealth, the, the, the buildings and the tabernacle, his armies, his land, he realized he's leaving it to incompetent people. He's all frustrated. But think about this real quick. Oftentimes people say, well, what's it worth now? What's it worth the struggle and the effort to put in whole life's worth of work and have nothing to show for it if it's all gonna go anyway? Well, here's the thing, there's a lot that has been documented, a lot has been known about his story, about King Solomon, the son of King David. King David was, of course, the one who slayed the giant, uh, Goliath. And when you look at what God is putting on his plate, what God is putting in your plate, God wants you to be a great steward of the talents, of the opportunities, and the relationships that is being ushered your way. This way says here in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 18, reads like this. I hated all things I had toiled under the sun, because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. As I continue to read Ecclesiastes, I kind of read a language that I'm not very much attracted to. And uh, that feeling I'm getting here is helplessness. I don't like being in a position ever where I'm feeling helpless. Matter of fact, my kids talk like the people in my business talk like that, associates talk, and they've had this helpless tone. I don't like that language. I'm not vibing right now with what King Solomon has to say. And it's, it's all meaningless. What's the point? It's all meaningless. Why do this all for? Why invest? And why build buildings? Why create structure? Why make other people happy? It's meaningless. What's it for? I don't like this language. And this is where I'm, I'm going to disagree. And one day when I'm in heaven, I'm going to have a long conversation with King Solomon about what he meant here in this book here, Ecclesiastes, because I'm not liking this vibe. Meanwhile, in your life's journey, whether you just graduated college, you just started a family, got a new job, you started a business, you're expanding your business, you got grandkids, you have a different stage of life and things are starting to grow and flow your way. Make the most of whatever God is sending your way. Find comfort knowing that you're making a difference in not only your lives, but other people's lives directly and indirectly probably long after you're gone, but you can make a long impact in a lot of people's lives, you're planting seeds. Like I have a feeling that my descendants, and I could be wrong about this, but I'm doing my very best to create the provisions and the resources for my children to continue to honor God. As long as the Paul last name stays around this earth, I want to make sure they have the vision, the provision and the resource because we're going to connect it to the source 
of how to make an impact in this world. The children, we're going to make great citizens out of our family last name. Of course, not to say that we're going to have a perfect family. We'll all be operating in the spirit of excellence as we journey through life. Now, if you help other people, you give, other, you give to other people, you invest in other people, do it because it's your job to do it. It's your, your steward. You've been blessed with certain talents, resources, and opportunities and experience. Bless other people for the fact that you're blessing other people, not because you're looking for a response in return. That had been my mistake early on. I still wrestle with that. With the quid pro quo type of attitude, you gotta make sure you say, listen, if God gave this to me, it's not for me to hold it. I'm just a steward to pass it on. But also it's my job and duty to pass it on and bless it to other people. Now, whether or not they respond to you in kindness, they respond to you in thankfulness and gratefulness, it's not for you to receive that. You just gave for the betterment of giving. Because now if you're not giving with that type of disposition, now you're trying to manipulate, in my opinion, you're trying to manipulate that situation. Remember, you're not doing it for you, you're doing it for him. And that all goes back to the perspective we all learned from last week, which is the perspective of what? Not an earthly perspective, not an entrepreneurial perspective, not from a success and championship perspective, but from an eternal God-centered perspective. Now, on your journey, remember this key proverb from King Solomon, he wrote in chapter three of Proverbs, it reads like this, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall make your path straight. And I'm just curious, would you like to get these notes on a PDF? Let me know in the comment section below. Put, I am operating from an eternal perspective and let us know whether or not you'd love to get a free copy of these notes for your future workbook that you can have down the road. That being said, I appreciate you tuning in to the Wealth and Wisdom series here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. And once again, to catch up with the Wealth and Wisdom series, click right here. That's it. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today.